Hi there, in today's video we are going to talk about the warm front and the cold front. We're gonna see what are these weather phenomena and how are they created, okay? So without further ado, let's jump right into it. V1 rotates. Hi there, I'm Gabriel from pilotclimb.com. I help you to become a better pilot. So if this is what you want to do, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to support my job, please give it a like to the video because this really helps the channel to grow. Okay, so let's talk about warm front and cold front. Before talking actually how these fronts are created and formed, okay, we need to understand that in the atmosphere around the globe, okay, we've got big air masses that, that goes around, they fly around, okay. So we don't have to think about like the atmosphere on top of the Earth's surface, like a, a, as a big air mass that has got the same characteristic. That's completely wrong. Within the atmosphere, we've got this mass of air that you can think about like a cells of air or big bubbles, okay, of air that they goes around and each mass of air has got a specific temperature, humidity, and specific characteristic, like the density, for example. Okay, the density changes. So, so what will happen when a warm mass of air, less dense and warm mass of air, meet up and catch up with a colder mass of air, which is more dense? What will happen is that one of the two will rise. Which one of the two? Normally, since the warm mass of air is less dense, will have the tendency to climb, and the cold mass of air will have the tendency to stay low. Okay, depending on who catch up with who, like if the warm mass of air reaches a cold mass of air or vice versa, we have this warm and cold front. I will let's jump into the whiteboard where I can draw up a little a few examples in order to make sure that this is clear. Okay. So first of all, the name of the front, whether it's a warm front, a cold front, the name, okay, the warm front, for example, the name is taken by the, the mass over that is moving faster and reach the other mass over. So in the example that we're going to do now, the warm front is because the warmer mass over is going faster than the colder mass over, okay? So let me give you an example. Let's divide this situation into three, uh, into, into three different scenarios, okay? So in the first scenario in here, let me do something like that, guys. Okay, beautiful. Good. So in the first scenario, okay, we have a, a, a warm mass of air. And guys, I'm just talking about mass of air. I'm not talking about clouds, okay? This is just a, like a bubble that we cannot see uh, with our eye because it's not, it's not a cloud, okay? That is moving, this warm mass of air, let's call it, is moving at 20 knots, okay? And then it will reach a colder mass of air that I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna uh, draw it up with a, a white, uh, sorry, a blue uh, color, okay? This is a colder mass of air that is not, uh, it's not a cloud, it's just a mass of air, okay? So we have a warm mass of air that is moving at 20 knots and a cold mass of air that is moving at 10 knots, okay? There will be a point where these two masses of air will reach each other and will collide, okay? They will basically catch up each other, okay? So what will happen is that since the warm mass of air is less dense, okay, what will happen is that the, the warm mass of air, okay, the warm mass of air will start to go on top of the cold mass of air because it's less dense, okay. Since they, they don't really mix each other, the one of the two has to climb and the other one has to stay low. And since the cold mass of air is more dense, stays on the, on the ground and the warm mass of air starts to slide, okay. So in the second example in here, what we have, we have the, the line that divides the two uh, masses of air and we have the warm mass of air that starts to climb. Once the mass of air that is climbing, the warm mass of air starts to climb, reach the new point, will become the air, will become saturated and will start to build up clouds. So as you can see in here, that is a, now is a cloud. Let me change this uh, color to, uh, let, let's make it like this, for example, okay? So in order to make sure this is now a cloud, okay, so this is a cloud and in here we've got some precipitations, okay, because the warm mass of air since it's climbing on top of the cold mass of air, of the colder mass of air, 
okay? What will happen is that it reaches due point and then it starts to become saturated and it becomes a cloud and then we have the precipitation, the rain, okay? So this is the, only the mass of air that is colder, which is below that, okay? So this is colder mass of air, okay? And then on top of that, since the warm mass of air is actually climbing, what will happen is that it will reach a point where it condenses, becomes a cloud and starts to rain, okay? Then it climbs and then it loses its saturated status, okay? The, it's, it's, it, it becomes less saturated because, it's, uh, because of the rain, okay? It's losing water vapor. And then it will reach a point where you're gonna see the cirrus, okay? So the cirrus, guys, if you're not familiar with them, I are high level clouds, okay? So let's say you are standing in here, okay? So this is you, okay? And you see a cirrus clouds and you see a this uh, this cumulus you you can see like middle clouds such as nimbus stratus alto stratus and so on so you see this cloud formation there with some rain in there so if you have this kind of of uh, configuration cloud configuration you can really think about a warm front okay guys the warm front okay it's it's huge okay it can reach as well as can be as long as 500 nautical miles it really depends on the uh, atmospheric situation on the weather situation okay so but as you can see guys so the warm mass of air will reach the cold mass of air it will start to climb on top of the a colder mass of air and since it's climbing will reach its dew point sometime in some some places okay and then we'll start to we start to have some precipitation because of the precipitation the mass of air will lose water vapor does the cloud formation will become smaller and thinner and then we actually gonna have less and less uh, clouds and then we're gonna have alt high level high level clouds as the cirrus so if you look and you have cirrus in there then you've got the, you have got this clouds formation that could go that could go from nimbus stratus alto stratus medium live medium level clouds with some rain in there with this slope that means that you have a warm front coming uh, in front of you Okay, so what will happen is that you will uh, suddenly see, first of all, these cirrus clouds, and then you will have, first, you will have some precipitation, okay, followed, some precipitation from a mid-level cloud, followed by general, general, general good weather, okay, because you're going to see first the cirrus, then this type of clouds that it has got this slope that is not really vertical, but it has got this... Uh, uh, not a shallow slope, okay, with some rain in there, okay? So guys, I hope you now understand the warm front and how it's formed. But now let me ask you a question. What will happen if we have got actually the opposite things? Let's say now the cold uh, mass of air will actually move faster than the warm mass of air. And since we said that the front takes the name from the faster mass of air, we're gonna talk about the cold front. Okay guys, so let's talk about the cold front now. As we said, as we saw in the example that we just made, the warm front, okay? In that case, the warm air was moving faster, but in this case, the colder mass of air is the one that is moving faster, okay? So let's call it 20 knots now, and it's cold, okay? And it's moving faster than the warm mass of air that has got this, is in front, okay? So in this case, we've got the warm mass of air that is moving at 10 knots, let's say, okay? Again, guys, the speeds are, are just examples, okay? So what will happen is that when the cold mass of air, okay, will reach the warm mass of air, since the cold mass of air is denser, is, has got more, is, the density is higher, what will happen is that it will go under it, okay? And it will push the warm mass of air up, so we, what we're gonna have, we're gonna have a situation like this. This is the line that divides the two, uh, the two masses of air, okay, where in here we've got the cold mass of air that's actually going under the warm mass of air. And then in here, we've got the warm mass of air, okay, that has been pushed upwards by the cold mass of air that's going under, okay? And as you can see, guys, the difference between the warm front and the cold front is already the slope of the front itself, okay? It's already because, as we saw before, the, cold, the warm front was shallower, but the cold front, since is the cold air is going down, it will push the warm air up and the, the slope is a lot higher. Because this warm air is climbing very fast, what will happen is that we're gonna have these vertical clouds, such as the CBs, okay? 
CBs, all right? So what will happen is that in a cold front, you may have CBs and very big precipitation like thunderstorms and so on, okay? So as you can see already, the difference between a warm front and a cold front, apart from the slope, you've got as well a different type of precipitation and cloud formation. In this case, you're gonna have a CBs, thunderstorms and so on, okay? Another difference is that the, uh, sorry, the cold front, guys, is actually uh, smaller. So the cold front can go as long, uh, can be as big as 250 nautical miles. So the, 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 the dimension of the cold front is actually half of the warm front. Why? Because as we saw before, the warm front is shallower, has got a shallower slope because the warm air uh, being less dense is it climbs gently on top of the, of the cold air. But in the case of the cold front, since the cold air is moving fast, it will go under the uh, warm front, the warm air, the warm air is pushed up, and by this push movement, okay, by, this, uh, by the warm air that is pushing upwards, you're gonna have these CBs, okay, because the air is gonna climb very fast in a short, uh, short distance, okay? So guys, now, as you can see, let me do another example in here. Okay, let me take another page. Here we go. So if you take this new page, we can actually divide now the, 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 the whiteboard into two sections. We can call it in here cold front, okay, cold front. And in the other side, warm front. And we're gonna draw them, both of them, so we see, we look at the differences, okay, warm front. Beautiful. So the warm front, guys, as we said, is shallower, Okay, then I will have medium clouds, medium level clouds. Normally, you've got nimbus stratus, alto stratus, and so on. Okay, you're gonna have a, 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 an intensity on the precipitation, which is a, a lighter precipitation. Okay, so the precipitation is gonna be lighter. And then you're gonna have high level clouds, such as the cirrus, in front of the cold front. Also, in front of the warm front. So the warm front can be up to 500 nautical miles, so as you can, can be, guys, but it could be even shorter, okay? So as you can see, you have less precipitation, I mean, not less, the intensity of the precipitation will be lighter, okay? You're gonna have high-level clouds, such as the cirrus, and then you're gonna have medium-level clouds, such as the alto stratus, the nimbus stratus, and so on. So, nimbus stratus, here we go. If you look at the uh, cold front, okay, so let me make this example, the cold front is, has got a steeper, uh, a steeper gradient, okay, the cold air is in here, the warm air is in there, and what will happen is that the, the warm air is pushed upward, so you're gonna have a vertical clouds, okay, formations, such as the CBs, you're gonna have the, press, the intensity of the precipitation will be heavier, okay, and the cold front uh, length is actually shorter, okay? It normally is half of the uh, 250 nautical miles, half of the warm fronts, okay? So, but what will happen is that once the cold front will pass, okay, you're gonna have big thunderstorms, okay? The intensity of the rain will be high, but then you're gonna have normally, gener generally you can have good weather, okay? However, since the warm front is longer, you might actually have a, a, a less, uh, the intensity of the rain will be less, however, it's gonna be, it might stay longer there because it's a longer weather phenomenon that will pass, okay? And the cold front is the typical thunderstorm that arrives, you get a big uh, intensity, high intensity rain, okay? Heavy rain and then it pass over, okay? But the warm front, it will take more time, but the rain is less, uh, uh, the intensity of the rain is actually lighter, okay? Okay, guys, so I hope you now understand what is a warm front, what is a cold front, and what are the differences between these two fronts. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, and then I will help you out. Also, go to pilotclimb.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content. I wish you a great day, and I'll see you on the next one.